I do have to say like, what is something that someone is gonna give two minutes of their time up right now to watch? Why is this something that people are gonna share? What is something new they're gonna learn about it? Like what, what um, because time is a luxury and like that's what you're trying to get people to stop and do is mm -hmm. give you their time. And I don't think of it, I mean, I don't think of it in terms of like clicks and views and likes. I really look at it as like, how will I get someone to give up their time to watch it is a question I ask. And what, and that influences the creative strategy that influences like, you know, for example, we got approached by an incredible museum in New York to come up with, um, you know, a pitch for them. And, you know, we're in the second round for them, which I'm really happy about. Um, but, you know, I said to them, I was like, what is the video that we will make for you that when you're playing it at your event gala, that a noisy room of people drinking cocktails will stop and turn to watch? Because I know you're going to play it there. So this video has to do its job. It mm -hmm. has to kind of make everyone stop and pay attention, even physically, right? And that's like an in-room experience. But that same idea has to apply digitally too. You know, Norway has never really talked about race and identity in the way that it really should be, right? And so that's kind of what sparked an idea for a particular series. I was like, well, this will be the first. And this will also end up getting attention on the local news networks and it will get shared by people within the communities of the folks featured in the videos as well. So I think you have to understand your market or new market and figure out, you know, what your primary market's going to be. You know, is it like local Norwegian speakers? Is this the globe? Because if you're just trying to be everything to everyone, it's not going to work. And you should actually, I mean, when you think about movies, like the movie that won the Oscar, right? Like, you know, last year, Parasite. Korean language film that was genre breaking. It wasn't for horror fan, fans. It wasn't for like drama fans. It was like so honest and true to its own like voice and vision. And it was in a way the authenticity and the specificity of that culture that made it relatable to so many people too. Mm -hmm. And it was wildly creative. Um, so for something like that, I mean, I think filmmakers, you know, try and really stay true to the, you know, their authentic voice or the experience of their characters. And that is ultimately what will make you, you know, understand like the plight of someone who's different from you even though you know you may not be that primary market like the best things will ultimately touch upon a shared humanity mm. um but yeah i mean it's you know i right don't we all struggle right sitting on you know on our couches watching netflix and we can't figure out what on earth to watch it is the most annoying thing because everyone has worked so hard to answer the audience question. <laughs> and I'm just like, I just want to watch a comedy all the time. <laughs> you know, I love documentaries, but like, I don't know, in these COVID times, I'm just like, I just really want to watch funny things. Yeah. And that's where I'm at. But so my, even as an audience, my behavior is evolving based on how I'm feeling right now. And so that could, that influences me a little bit where I'm like, okay, we should look at some comedy. So when my friend today sent me a message being like, can you direct a comedy? I was like, 100% yes. Because there are a lot of people that feel like me right now and just really want to watch something that's super fun. Hmm. Okay, I got to ask quick. Are you placing any bets on TikTok? I mean, TikTok is, I'm not on TikTok, um, but I feel like I see enough of it shared anyway on Instagram yes. and all my friends share it. So it's like, I, I think it's fun and funny. I think for me, uh, you know, I think I've directed stuff that has ended up on TikTok, like the Michael Kors campaign was on TikTok and someone told me that and I was like, great, I, I haven't seen it. <laughs> um, but, you know, it's, uh, I think people are having fun with it. And 
I I need to do like digital detoxes in terms of like how many things I'm on. And of course, like, you know, I'm also on Clubhouse, but I actually haven't listened. I've been on it for a while, but I actually haven't listened to any conversation, but I keep getting every notification. Uh, but I'm like, it's fine. It's <coughs> fine. You know, I need to have like, you know, there's this incredible book called The Artist's Way where, you know, part of the process of like even being a creative person is to completely not consume other, you know, it's, it's actually like they say, like do a week of like, don't read anything. Don't read the news. Don't read a book. Don't watch a movie. It's almost like a mental cleanse that you need to do. So I'd say like, you have to figure out those boundaries. <laughs>